Ready to go? Yeah. Again, out of tune. Why can't we carry a tune this week, Steve? I can week, never Steve? carry a tune. Hum. Uh, that sounds bad, too. Um, I'm not able to sing a, hum, a simple hum right now. What is going on? Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, body, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing. Podcast. Podcast. Here we are. Uh, this first ad was sent to us. Do you have the notes for that? Yeah, this first ad was sent to us by Ted Jackal. This is off of Reverb. It says... Uh, Bootleg Guitars, Custom Telly, 2016, Custom Finish. About this listing, just something I built for fun. If you built it for fun, it should be fun. It should be fun. I do. Plays and sounds fantastic. Hard w- hand-wound pickups, bone nuts, spurzel locking tuners, high-quality electronics, scratch-built in-house, neck is quarter song Eastern Rock Maple, and seasoned for five years for true clarity, sustain, and tone with natural sage, mint, and parsley oh my gosh you you don't need to read the rest there's no other information there about this guitar i don't know man it's all just about about the brand it's not about this guitar which is bonkers because the description doesn't say anything about the fact that this is like a telecaster shape with like one inch thick tooth shaped cutouts i thought they were supposed to be like sun rays they might be or they might be like like the back spikes on like an alligator yeah. or Ryan, something? Ryan, whether you're a touring pro, local hero, or just a weekend warrior, this guitar will fit right into whatever world you wish to create. <laughs> this is so bonkers and bizarre. And he included... This is a reverb listing, by the way. Did you did we mention the price? Uh, no, we did not. The price of this is $2,700. Well, $2,699. Um, yeah, he wants... Two thousand seven hundred dollars for this thing. This is this guy is a legit builder. He's got photos here of normal, pretty guitars that he's built. The semi hollow thing, kind of like this offsetty Gibsony Thunderbirdy sort of thing. A bass, super strats, and then he's got this thing that looks. It looks like it's supposed to be a joke, right? I don't, I, you know, I almost wonder well, what the heck, what, the, I don't understand the signature on the headstock either. Well, there, this is hand signed because he's a boutique builder, um, but literally there's, there's spikes coming out the edge of this or horns or fins, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah. That are like two to three inches long all the way around the edge of a Telecaster shape. Every step of this process is mastered, right? Every neck blank is aged like fine wine but what does that have to do with this guitar like there's just a bunch of copy paste stuff about his brand in general he mentions the guitar player from godsmack and i I'm, i just keep wondering is this supposed to be a reference to the godsmack logo maybe you know really strange the crazy sort of he's way. got a cnc design layout here why why did he even feel the need to plan this out when it looks so wonky? And then everything else about it, like there's this weird paint spider finish that's a different color on the spikes on the outside. And then the inside is like this black and gray swirled paint. The top of the body itself kind of looks like a micarta is that micarta is that what i'm thinking of like a tabletop design right right or like for mica for mica yeah i don't know what you're trying the magna carta uh magna carta i'm more of a declaration of independence guy myself (laughs) two humbuckers hardtail well one's a humbucker. three saddle one is a humbucker the other one is a filtertron the filtertron is white in the middle the humbucker looks like it plays a uh, cornerback for the Cleveland Browns. <gasps> yeah, what is going on here? There's so much going on. Like, it, and, and, there, and there's just no information. It provided. deserves a description from oh, the builder. These are, these are hand-wound pickups, though. The builder listed this, and he said nothing about it and just acted like it's normal. What is going on He just on wants here? you to message him. 
He wants you to message him so you'll ask questions. And then he can pitch a custom build to you? He's selling this out of Gulf, Gulfport, Florida. So he's probably has coronavirus. And he's in Florida. That explains all of it. <laughs> I mean, this episode could end up getting back to him. This guy is a builder. He will probably listen to us talking about this. So if you're listening to this right now, builder, I just I want to know more. Like, what was the inspiration? What was the theme? What was the goal? Ryan's over here feeling like Greece. Tell him more. Tell him more. Tell him yeah. more. What's the deal with this guitar? Tell him more. Tell him more. Tell him more. What's up with these Sunray Spike Dragon Tails? Right. Tell him more. Could tell it poke an more. eye out? Tell him more. What's the... what what? Huh? With a little bit different theming, this could be... Like a chainsaw guitar. Like it could be like a horror guitar. Like a prop for like a haunted house sort of thing. Like put a, like a drawstring on it and go. Rrr, rrr, and like, oh, I'm going to cut you in half with my guitar now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's what that I thought it was going to be when I first saw the, the little picture for the ad. I was like, oh, is this like a weird like torture instrument guitar? Is this a, a slasher guitar? What is going on? So anyways, what's new, Steve? Uh... Nothing Not much, new. man. I've got two things that came in the mail that are new. Uh, first thing came uh, from Patrick Armstrong, supporter of the show. Yeah. In the inner circle. Has a piece of wood in there. I don't think that's what he's trying to send me. Oh, I thought it was. No. He sent one of these to uh, my mortal enemy as well, Andy. <laughs> oh. It's a California license plate that says, out of tune. <laughs> And apparently this is a reference to something that we said in passing on the show, and I don't remember it at all. So please refresh my memory. Where was this from? I like it. It's like a Back to the Future reference. Oh. Back to the Future. Like out of time, out of time, tune. But you're out of tune. What should I put this on? Should I put it on a guitar? I don't know, man. Just maybe make a pit guard we'll out of this. somewhere back there. I should just hang it on an amp or something like that. I'll find a place for it. But this is cute. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And then I've got one more thing here. What's this other thing you got here, Ryan? From a fellow podcaster. Ooh. Oh. It is swell with my soul. It's Fox Cairo, right? Yeah, it's from Fox Cairo. Andrew Renard, uh, Fox Cairo. He makes pedal toppers. You know what? For volume pedals, for lots of other things. Uh, <laughs> don't screen grab this and use it to make a meme. Um, he actually makes pedal toppers for like the HX. They're not the HX Stomp because there's no wah wah. No, he makes it. them for, uh, for the Ernie Helix, balls for the Ernie balls and the Dunlops. And he makes them for all the volume pedals. There you go. I'm yeah, wearing it. It's really cool. It fits me too. Nice fit on that. Yeah. So thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Go listen to Get Offset. Yeah. Or, and go check out Fox Cairo on Etsy. I'm pretty sure he made the pedal topper for uh, for Mrs. Smith. He did. She's got that Black Lives Matter. Uh, yep. He made pedal that topper. one. He's made one in I think the I think the um, what's the design called? It's the F Jerry design. The one that F Jerry stole. It's called like Snazzy. Mm. It's like the it's like the uh, '90s. Dixie Cup logo. Oh, right, right, right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. The, the, paper, looks like, the paper cup swoosh. Looks like fresh prints. <laughs> Some fresh printsy <laughs> Saved by the Bell thing. Yeah. Is this where we do a sponsor? I can never remember. Do you think of Saved by the Bell as an 80s show or a 90s, 90s. show? 90s. That's a 90s show. Even though it started in the 80s. When did it start? Do you think of Star Trek The Next Generation as an 80s show or the 90s show? 80s. Oh. Even though it's probably, I think it's actually has spent more time in the 90s. Well, it was syndicated more in the 90s. Well, no, it, the first season was 1987. So oh, really? 1987, 88, 89, and then 90, anyway. I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm just, I mean, Next Generation is themed like a 1980s hotel, I mean, a hospital waiting room. Like That's what everything looks like. So I, <laughs> I watched cool. Next Generation in, I think, late 80s, early 90s. So, you know, it straddles it. It's just the part where I talk about other podcasts and how, <laughs> how the, the mullet is actually a 90s hairstyle. The mullet goes back into the 80s too, though. It's like, well, so it's it's a thing where it's like because of the way it overlaps happen, 
um, a lot of things that happen. Um, Why are we on this topic? I don't know. It, it's just because we're talking about time. We're out of time. Out of time. We're out of tune. Um, out of tune. Talking. So a lot of things. So if something happens in 1989 and like raise, raise, rises to prominence and you notice it in like 1991, but you know, like you've like, it solidifies itself in your brain in like 1991, uh-huh. but you've known it's existed. You will think of it as like an 80s thing, even though it might be be like more of a 90s i think the problem is that we have this hard way to define things that's dependent on a 10-year chunk no it is it's like the the thing that we think of as iconic 80s is really mid to mid 80s to early 90s yeah we're like you look at early 80s when i was born in 81 and everything is still brown and shag left over from the 70s and yeah it's all 70s stuff Early in the 80s. Like, you don't get into neon yeah. and spandex early 80s. That's later. All that sort of stuff. The so, more this has know. been our, uh, you know, talking about time segment on yeah. our guitar podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this week's uh, first sponsor is a. B- b- it's a. B- 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 yes. Big Ear Pedals. <laughs> Head on over to bigearpedals.com. Check out the Albi. Albi. Maybe a super efficient uh, modulation machine is not your style. Check out the woodcutter. Or the loaf. Fantastic distortion. Loaf, a mid-gain fuzz. Mm -hmm. Or the L, a luscious. luscious Or the Black Betty or uh, Betty White. Betty White. Which are the same pedal, just in different enclosures. One knob fuzz. Yeah. (laughs) Bigger pedals. We're big fans of them. They're big friends with us. Uh, They actually sponsored our eating tonight. They paid for our meals. We were supposed to buy cookies and camel milk. Yeah. Apparently. Um, Is there somewhere we can get camel camel milk? Uh, I was told to search for it on the internet. We're going to have to find camel milk. And we're going to drink camel milk from a camel. Whenever we like can we're actually make that happen. Like, we're going to get a camel on, in your garage. Yes, we're going to fit a camel in here. And, and we're going to suckle from it. the teat. We're going to suckle. We're not we're going to suckle from it. the teat of a camel. Okay. Yeah. Do we, do we want to get a dromedary or the one with one hump? Dromedary is the one with one oh, hump. Oh, what's the one with two humps? A back drain. Really? Yep. I've because never heard that word in my life. Because dromedary is a D. And that's how you know it's one hump because the letter D has one uh-huh. hump. And a back drain has two is humps. back is drain? B. I don't know how it's... I don't... Actually, I never really thought about the way it's pronounced versus... But I think it's B-A-C-T... Uh, I've never heard that word, and I thought I knew everything about camels. <laughs> back, back te- Bactrian? Bactrian. Weird. I don't... I. Camelus ferris it lives in China. It's from China. To learn more about camels and Mongolia and camel milk, hit up Grant Wilson over at Bigger Pedals <laughs> and thank him for sponsoring yet another episode of your favorite guitar podcast, the best podcast in the world, the top bo- the top guitar podcast in the world since 2014. They're named after Bactria. They're Bactrian camels. Cool. <laughs> The more you know. Now are we how doing many a, times am I going to say that? Topic or are we doing something else? Obviously We're a topic, do right? a topic. This week's first topic is sent by a guy and he wanted us to talk about a thing. Or right, let's do the one from Michael Krause first. Because that's actually a topic. The other one, I don't know how we're going to do it. All right. I got to rewrite my notes, man. Oh, so sorry. This is a loose episode. We're all over the place. It's because we're not doing it live. So we're like just fumbling. Uh, Michael Krause asks... Music trends. We've had disco, punk, new wave, hair metal, grunge, etc. It no longer seems like we have these genre trends. Is this because of the demise of record labels and radio stations and their ability to promote market music? Is this just a happy byproduct of streaming services giving everyone the ability to choose what they want to hear? Do you feel like I read that dramatically enough? No. no. <laughs> you could have read it more dramatically, Ryan. You should have read it more dramatically. Sorry. Um... I'll try better next time. Uh, So what do you think, Steve? Are there still genres? Or are genres over? Is that a thing of the past? I think there's still some genres. But I think genre blending is constant. Yes. Um, And I think genre blending... um, It doesn't seem like there's scenes anymore. Like when we were young and other people were young before us. 
when think, they were young people, like it could be like, oh, I'm a rock guy, or hey, I'm into rap, or hey, I like uh, smooth jazz. I don't like that other rough jazz. And it seems like these days you can't afford to be like you can have your things that you like, right? But for just general being in public, general talking to other people, you can't afford to be a specialist that way and wrap your identity around. I mean, I think some people, one genre I'm or sure another. some people still do that. I, I think there's, I think we have more and more of, or I, I would say, I think you have the same prevalence of not people who are not a thing. Right. Um, so like when I, I know when I was a kid, I, I knew people who were like, Oh, I listen to everything except country and rap. Right. And like now you, are, now all you listen to is country and rap. Yeah. That's actually a lot of people I think I knew who probably listened to everything except country now only like now primarily listen to country. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's because country is the only rock music around now. <laughs> Which is a weird realization to come to. Just realize what you. I wasn't. I didn't process. What um, yeah. So I. I think there. There is. Um, I think there is more blending. I think. Uh, there. I think there isn't. Rock anymore. Well, it, I think it, like I think like rap because there. There's not a lot of just straight rap it's hip-hop and you know sure blend, blends of rap it's it's just the undercurrent base level uh f- foundation of modern popular music american music western music yeah is you have this layer of rock with a layer of hip-hop over it and then everything is built on top of that and you can't escape it it's part of everything but there's not like a central like radio format, like here is today's rock music. Like you just, if the Foo Fighters put out something new, then that's on the radio. But it's like, for the most part, like the closest you get is kind of just like leftovers of alternative, which is still dipping into like kind of more eclectic sorts of stuff. And so I think that's like, is Billie Eilish rock, you know? Well, and that was a whole, when she, she was nominated for a bunch of stuff. She won a bunch of Grammys. Right, right. Whatever, right? I mean, Imagine Dragons is rock in air quotes, but that doesn't mean it's good, you know? Just because something's rock doesn't mean we should be listening to it. I would, I I think that the thing for me is that the, there's, I think, I think in the nineties you had a lot of bands that weren't, uh, were like two, they weren't, this is going to sound derisive maybe Uh oh they weren't sloppy enough to be grunge bands sure sure you know um even though like technically proficient like bands like even you know okay so first my first thought here that i'm backing up is that i think a lot of these things that we think of as genres um aren't as solidified in their time as we think they are Mm. um so you know a lot of the like a lot of the uh classification comes after the fact you know um, every now and then you have a scene that happens it's like oh yeah this is you know an emo scene or hey this is a metal right. scene but a lot of it is just like oh that was classic rock or well, oh that was that was all grunge and in the time they were like oh i thought we were a punk band yeah you know? and, and so i think maybe cl- classic rock is is probably well i don't you have, even classic rock i don't know where that came comes from it's a radio format it's uh, not because, actually a genre yeah uh, but my thought was like you know, where's, where was the line, um, between like James Brown and Casey and the sunshine band? Like what? Well, one's w- disco and one's soul. Well, I'm thinking like later James Brown where it's like, more. I like, might be wrong like, about Casey. They might be funk. My, my, so, okay. So what's the difference between like, like there's, there's this, that's what I'm saying. Like, even though like disco was, was evil, like disco sucks. And now there's like this funk resurgence. But if you go back and listen to like a lot of like tracks that were like quote disco tracks, it's like, oh, this is just funk with like a steadier beat. Yeah, it's dance floor like, funk. It's it's oh, that's a great way of or putting pop it. Pop funk. Pop funk. Yeah. And so I think you have not to be confused with P funk. Uh, and uh, so I think you have genres that in hindsight, we think of them as unified because we're so far away from it. And only the best examples of those, or maybe like the biggest examples of those 
genres still exist. But yeah, like you said, like grunge, like we look back at grunge and we see this whole wide range. But like if at the same time, like if you say, oh, what's grunge and you give someone Nevermind and then turn around and say, okay, when you're done listening to Nevermind, I want you to listen to Soundgarden Super Unknown. They're right. going to be like, this This isn't the same. This isn't even close to being the same. Yeah. Like, how is this the same? And then you throw them Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. And they're yeah. like, wait, what is grunge again? Can you please define this for me? Because yeah. I'm a little lost right now. And so it's like... Or like with hair metal, it's like you can show people, you know, Poison and, you know, whoever... Yeah, and but they're gonna be like, like, okay, yeah, this is this. I get it. This is all kind of the same thing. And maybe hair metal is like a one layer of specificity deeper. Whereas if you just said metal and you said, well, well, metal has so many billions of right. micro genres. Right, right. So hair metal is like a micro. I would say hair metal might be a micro genre. So all of this to say, one rock is dead. Uh, no, I, that, um, that long that, live rock rock is dead that I do think that in the current moment, there are very few like what we would think of as rock, uh, because there's such a heavy, like I have trouble defining what are technically alternative radio stations in town play. Like is like, they don't, is any of this a single genre is, is more of just like an iPod on shuffle. Well, it also doesn't help that I think 94, nine flipped formats like a couple weeks ago. Oh really? Um, I've been hearing like weird nine, like I'm waiting for them to play Hanson. <laughs> Really? They literally, I heard. Um, so they're going for like more like a Jack FM sort of. I, I, I don't know. I weird. don't, I do not know what's going on. Maybe they're just trying to skew younger. Um, no, but it's, that's what I'm saying is it's not, they're still current going, Hanson or old school Hanson, like old school Hanson. Oh, weird. So they are still alt 94, nine. This is just getting off the rails, but who that's cares? Okay. People just want to hear us talk about anything. They still have, uh, I'm trying to see their playlist. Where's their, where's your playlist guys? Um, you know, they're doing like one, the, the rock format radio is just, is just weird now. I mean, right? we have rock, like, sta- we have rock stations, but I'm sure if I went over there to a rock station right now, it'd be like Metallica mixed with gobsmack mixed with corn, you know, mixed with imagine dragons. Like that's what I imagine the format being right now. And so it's most, it would be mostly like throwback stuff. Like I don't, I, I think, the, right. I think the right. thing right now is because everything is so streaming centric, as far as music scenes go, like very few bands are aiming to even be on the radio because it's such a pipe dream Yeah, to even get there. You're, like the bands that exist now are existing in very small micro niches, okay. micro genres. Here's and here. so they're just not going to get picked up by radio, but they might have a really decent following on Spotify or whatever. For whatever reason, this playlist hasn't been updated since seven p.m., which was two hours ago. Oh, it's not up to date. No, damn, it's, it's not Steve, the point. I wanted you to get up to date information. So I'm going through this list, going back for a while. You've got some songs that I have definitely heard on this station before. Uh, Dissolve by Abso Facto, Africa, Weezer, uh, da, 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 da. But then you've got like Dance, you know the song Dance Monkey? Yes. Is that a is that an alternative song? That's my question though. Like it's kind of like if that had come out in the 90s and they played it back to back with Butthole Surfers, I would have been like, oh yeah, this is alternative. I, I guess. Um, they played, um, move along all American rejects, which I don't feel like would have been on 94, nine back in the day. It's more of a 91 X track. I don't remember. I know that's well, just the welcome fact- to the local radio I know, podcast. I know. I know. Um, cold play clocks. I guess that would have been on there. I don't know. To me, the one, here's the one that throws me off on this whole list. Lose yourself Eminem, which is that's the a weird throwback eight mile soundtrack. I think. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I wonder like, if they got a new program director or something. Um, Come and Go, which is Juice World, who's a rapper that died with Marshmallow, who's a DJ. Like th- th- some of these, there's. I'm telling. Do you remember the name? Do you remember the band Nine Days? They had this song. I think it was around the year 2000 called Story of a Girl. This is a yeah. story. Of, I heard that song on 94.9 last week. Weird. A song that I never would have heard anywhere else except for your Jack FMs, your right, your, right. your adult contemporary stations. I'm hearing adult contemporary on an alternative station. Right. I don't I don't what's 
I don't get it. But, you know, you had all your Third Eye Blinds and everything in the 90s that were playing on all those stations, too. But Third Eye Blind was singing about, like, doing crystal meth. Like, literally. Right. They edited that part out. I know. I know. Sorry to ruin your guys' childhoods. Doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break. Right. It won't stop. When something keeps stock. TikTok. <laughs> you drop we're about to win a podcast award <laughs> because of this moment right now um <laughs> so I, I do think michael i do think michael is going in an interesting direction uh i think we i think in 10 years we will look back and be able to right. genre everyone into neat Hindsight little boxes you know again 2020 oh my gosh <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> oh, you're still wearing um, your headphones. I am. I am. <laughs> um, but I think. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I need my microphone. That's not plugged into anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. Uh, but the other side of that is, I think we have a lot of genre fusion in this oh, moment yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, especially for 2020, we have artists who are. Um, Though some of this was happening before, you know, we talk. They one of the artists that was on the Alt ninety four nine list was um, Post Malone. Right. Post Malone kind of broke out as a mumble rapper, turned into weird kind of like. Um, there's a lot of like synth wave happening and vapor yeah. wave influenced music, but it kind of hits that adult contemporary thing you were. Mentioning. It kind of is adult contemporary. But because it's adult contemporary co coming from a guy who's covered in tattoos, it's getting played on the alternative stations because, you know, tattoos are bad. Tattoos are alternative. There's children at the door. Um, the other other examples of this um, are like Billie Eilish. You mentioned Billie Eilish right. earlier who kind of gets played on all of the stations who... Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to... Like pin down what genre is this? Yeah, you know? who's where does I, this fit? Who's like basically said, who's on record saying like, yeah, I'm I get pigeonholed like as far as like people who want to categorize like on the record producer side, people want to categorize her as pop because in her own words were something to the effect of like I get categorized as pop because I'm a young white girl. Oh yeah, totally. Like so, you know, what other I listened to when we listened to her album, I was like, this is not pop. There's nothing pop about this. Um but you see, you know, old people, you see boomers on the internet act like she's, you know, Justin Bieber and she's not. Yeah. And then the other side of that is I think in this current moment and maybe well, in like 2020 with so much lockdown and, you know, you have very limited access to like the big studio environment. So there's like a lot of one on one happening. There's a lot of uh, postal surface style, right. you know, people making a track and then sending it around and whatever. Um, I think you have some established artists who are taking risks and, and taking their own music. And maybe they're not. Maybe you wouldn't say they're risk. I don't feel like Taylor Swift putting out a, a folk heavy album is necessarily risky. Like I see how that makes sense, but other people are like, Oh, like she's doing something crazy. She put out an acoustic album or, a, and basically she put out a, a Lana Del Rey cover album. Oh, okay. But I don't know anything about that. It's good. Okay. Maybe we'll listen to it sometime. That'll be my next album pick. No, it won't. Um, so, you know, I think there's that, I think radio stations are lost in this moment because they don't have shows to promote. So I think a lot of the music that's coming into stations is this homebrew stuff mm. is like, and so you have yeah. the, like, there's like, you're not, I don't, are there new artists in 2020? That's a good question. <laughs> How do you become a new artist in 2020? <laughs> well, there's Tawny Newsom. No, she is an old artist. To just put out an album in 2020. Right, but like the album is like essentially a new band. Sure. Sure. I see what you what you mean though. I'm saying like for, as no, there's, far as the there's a concerned, lot of people you know. there's a lot of people making music right now, but like I was saying earlier, I don't think a lot of it fits on the radio because it's not being made for radio consumption. It's being made for a very different kind of fan base. Right. A very uh like almost micro niche specific fan base where it's like you have to like to, you literally have to discover stuff on your own somehow find out about a thing and be like oh i like this i'm gonna listen to this this is gonna be my thing yeah. and it's like 
you, like there's barely anyone else out there in your circle of people who knows what it is, but you like it. And then maybe you find people, other people online that like it and you like build an online community about it around it. But it's like how, because this stuff isn't being made for radio play because that's such a pipe dream to most bands. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling there's just a shortage of radio friendly music because no one's like the creative people of the world aren't even considering writing that way. Right. They're right. They're writing for expression. They're writing for their micro niches. They're writing for, uh, you know, to scratch whatever itch they have. Yeah. There's also a weird thing that's been going on for the last year or two or whatever, um, where occasionally you get these radio, these songs that become radio hits that are coming through TikTok. Right. So it's like, really, if you want to be, you know, if you want to be the next radio star, you have to figure out how to put a like 20 second or I don't, how long is, I don't know how long. I don't to, know. But you I, have to, you, I have, to make a, you so, have to make a song that, that teenage girls want to dance to. Yeah. You got to make a song that can Which be is can, kind of the formula throughout time. It is right. <laughs> but it's like, it, now it's become hypercritical about where do you have a 30 second portion of a song right. that can be turned into a viral dance craze for two weeks and that two this weeks will, like, will it's yeah, basically I, like the Macarena. Like the it's Macarena. like I don't know. Every song now is the Macarena. I had TikTok on my phone for about a week and a half until I realized this is not for me. This is for teen girls and I will delete this now and do other things with my adult male life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think we've done it. I, you know, continue the discussion in the comment section or wherever you happen to be. Um, I just, I, 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 to sum up what I'm thinking, like it used to be that everyone was trying to get on the radio because that was the path to success. So yeah. everyone was trying to write radio songs. So there was a glut of content for uh, station programmers to sift through mm -hmm. and the the labels that were huge at the time to sift through to find stuff that would hit on radio there's because people aren't writing for radio anymore. There's a very limited stock of music that is radio friendly in a traditional right. sense. I think when, you know, someone gets smart, some, some program director gets smart and figures out like, Oh, we're just going to make a station based on, you know, whatever 14 songs are on TikTok this week. That'll be, a, it'll, that'll be the genre. It'll be TikTok as a genre. Right. <laughs> And it'll be like grunge. Or it's like there's no rhyme or reason to what is or isn't grunge. It's just whoever happened to be making music in Seattle in the right couple of years. Is, yeah. It'll be whoever happened to be making the right music on TikTok within you know the right span of a couple months or something like that. So I think that might be where we're headed, weirdly. All right. Time for another ad. Who's this ad from? This ad is from Daniel Esporma. This is a Gibson Flying V Heritage Carina reissue 1981 to 1983. A custom zebra stripe finish for sales of Flying V Heritage Karina. All the things I just said. <laughs> custom painted at our retail store. Our retail store. What retail? O.D. Bella Music uh, in Bergenfield, New Jersey. <laughs> Good old uh, Bergenfield. Along with the custom paint job of the zebra stripes, the guitar also has a Seymour Duncan SH5 wound by Maricela Juarez. The neck pickup is the original Gibson humbucker. The serial number on this guitar is stamped in the back of the headstock and reads C-164. Please message us if you have any questions. This is a one-of-a-kind piece that is painted like a zebra. I like it. What is Is this Velcro? No, you've never seen that before? That's the a rubber strip that goes on the bottom wing of a flying V so it doesn't slip off your leg. Oh. Gibson puts that on flying Vs commonly. Interesting. Oh, yeah. it's got a Kaler? Kalar. 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 We were told how to pronounce Kapla! it correctly. Kales. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Klingon uh, tremolo system, the Kalar. I like a lot of this. And this, uh, something really big I like about this is it's the shape of V that I like that has the big dramatic kind of cut off from the right. neck instead of being blended from the neck. Right. Like it's squared off at the neck. The Which body one is. is yours? Uh, mine is a Hondo style body, so it blends a little ah. bit more. 
but there, there's two different Gibson styles of Flying V, and this is the Albert King oh, okay. version of the body that has that big kind of squared off top. And that's the one that I've always wanted to have in a Gibson. Um, if I was going to get a Gibson V, I'm not sure I would get one with a Kaler. Uh, but if I saw this hanging in a pawn shop store mm-hmm. in, the, in the window while I was walking by, you know I'd walk in <laughs> to check this thing out. It's way outside my price range in the two grand kind of range. Yeah. But I actually really like the zebra stripes too. It is funky and flashy in all the directions that I like. Is this like is this headstock? Is that original? I'm pr- yeah, that's a decal that they put on. Oh, okay. On a uh, uh, on a uh, flying V. Sometimes it's the uh, the 3D yeah, yeah like chromed headstock. Very cool. But obviously this is you know like an 80s yeah or early 90s throwback Gibson. Or that was an aftermarket add on it, which it very well could be. Actually, I think it might be because it's mounted on posts. Oh, interesting. Very cool. What do you think, man? Um, I don't know much about flying Vs, and I don't really think I could pull the zebra off. Three grand they want for this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't pull off zebra (laughs) i can't pull off anything like we're both big dorks like nothing that you can't we can't get something that looks cool and have it make us look cool we just happen to be people holding something that looks cool and i think this looks cool you know it's totally like a hair metal throwback yeah glam rock sort of thing uh where you need to be like in the back of a convertible limousine with a uh, jacuzzi in the back i feel like i need this for like my weezer cover band that could make sense I think it's fun. I for me personally, it's not three grand fun. No, no, that's that's the problem here. Is, is but that's your, like normal Gibson I, prices. Weird. I don't know if this is norm. That's I. So that's a. I guess a, an aside, and I have to look it up, and I'm not going to. Right. How you have to figure out how much a Gibson Flying V of this year with a Kaler tremolo is worth, and then yeah. you have to figure out how much those zebra stripes are worth to you or not worth to you. To well, and that's the thing is, I don't think the zebra stripes are really worth that. They're really clearly much. hand painted on. In one of the pictures, you can see kind of the texture of it. Yeah, it's lumpy. It's not like these are a professional finish on here. So it's, it's a lumpy hand painted thing. But I think it's kind of a clean look, and I think it, they did a decent job of it. But yeah, it, it's probably never going to sell for three grand. But I still wouldn't be surprised if it sold for over two. I could see this going for over two. I just, I don't know if this is. It's got to find the right buyer. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, It's not going to be for just your general, oh, I want a flying V. Although with that, that shape that I'm hot on, it might be a good refin project for someone who wants that shape of flying V with a Kaler. I mean, I guess I'm looking at one that's a nor- more standard finish, more all around normal, a lot normal, more normal going on. Yeah, that's normal. Um, it's got, it looks like the regular body, the blended, more blended right, right. style body. And this is 2500 Yeah, I'm saying the price isn't that far off. There's I still a, think it'll go for over two. There's a 1979 with the Kaler. Uh, which also uses the tail po- p- post. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Oh, this they probably is original. Seventy five hundred dollars. Seventy five hundred, but it's silver burst. Like What's silver burst Gibsons stock? are. Yeah, you know, that has the, uh, it's the, the big got the big old logo. truss thing on it. Um, so a little different. I'm not seeing a ton of comparable examples here, but they are up in this price range. This price is actually like maybe even a little knocked That's down. That's what I'm saying. I think it might be worth it. In fact, compared to this 1958 Gibson Flying V Carina, it's a steal. They're giving it away. It's not four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars plus eighty dollars shipping. They can't really <laughs> expect to get that, can they? Can that is that I don't know. a real price? Or but it's that, got that metal. Yeah, it's, it's got, got the, it's got the metal logo on the headstock. That's the real price. This is Emerald City guitars. Jeez. This could be the next four hundred thousand dollar flying V, guys. No, it'll imagine never be. playing four thousand dollars for a flying V, a guitar that's practically impossible to hold. <laughs> <laughs> Even on a strap, it's wonky, and you're going to pay four grand for it just because it was made in one year versus another. 
<laughs> pure collector. You're a co- if you're a collector and you got four hundred thousand dollars, go buy that yeah, Karina. If you're, if you're super rich, <laughs> Steve, are you going to buy that and then no pour gasoline all over it? <laughs> 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 got that gasoline refin from Super Rich Steve. Gosh. <laughs> That's interesting though. I I like looking at it. I'll say that. And like I said, if I walked past a pawn shop, yeah, it would get me in. It would get me in, the, in the door, door for sure. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's the word that gets you in the door? It's a loss leader. <laughs> it's not a loss leader because they're not selling it for below market value. It's not like the rotisserie chickens it's at win- Costco. It's a window dressing. It's window dressing. There you go. There we go. All right. This uh, next part of the show is where we talk about Chase Bliss Audio. Oh, shoot. Look what I got in my hand. It's the uh, preamp Mark II Automaton here with sliders. Beam your friends down to the planet's surface with these fancy sliders or impress your clients in your recording studio or take it out on the road with your punk band. On the fraud. On the fraud. Road. This can be... The pedal of your dreams is an overdrive. It's a distortion. It is a nasty, nasty, nasty fuzz. It's an EQ pedal. Ooh. It's a wah pedal. It's all these things. And the sliders move by themselves is when you a, go through presets tremolo? or control it via MIDI. It could be a tremolo. If you hook it up to a MIDI program or something like that and have the volume ramp up and down, it can be a lot of things. And it's beautiful. It's by Chase Bliss. They make pedals more creative than you are. They've been sponsoring the show for a long time. So if you want to thank someone for making the show possible, make sure it's Chase Bliss this holiday season. Buy yourself something nice. Get yourself a dark world. Get yourself the Thermae. Get yourself a Mood or a Blooper or the Automaton. Put something like this fancy under the tree for you this Christmas. Show your family that you love yourself. And then they'll know that you have time and energy left over to love them as well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Huge thanks to Chase Bliss for once again sponsoring us. All right, the next topic. Yeah, we're going to run with this one. We'll see what happens. I don't know if we can uh, get anything out of Brad this. Brad Williams wants us to talk about people who use the phrase running, as in running a set of 11s into a blah, blah pedal amp, running a blah, blah speaker like they're in F1 or something and not in their bedrooms. Uh, uh, I feel like if you were in F one, you wouldn't be running. You'd be driving this sick jazz master. Yeah. Into a, I'm just saying. Yeah, you're driving it down the road into your DS one into your Line Six Spider. I mean, I I guess like these are just you know different ways of saying is running. Where like where does that come from as a as a synonym I think for of using like running like. Your computer is running. Your refrigerator is running. Or like it could be like your cable line. Oh, like yeah. I'm, I'm running a signal path. I guess the signal path can be run. You're running a path. Yeah. I think it makes sense. I don't have any problem with it. I mean, it, you, you could call it walking. Like, oh, I'm walking this guitar through. If you're in your bedroom, you're I'm, walking. Yeah. Or I'm sitting it. I'm sitting. <laughs> Jogging. I'm jogging. If you're a if you're an, an intermediate player, you're jog. I'm jogging this uh, set of uh, Dario tens. I'm 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 jogging Dario tens on this here jazz master. If you're a shredder, then you're sprinting your gear. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're Eric Clapton, he got that slow hand, so he's marathoning. Here's what we do: we have to determine different speeds of trans of self transportation for different kinds of gear. If it's a piece of gear meant for like fast playing, you need like, oh, I'm sprinting this, uh, I'm sprinting this this Ibanez gym into my pedal board, which I'm walking mm-hmm. because there are elements of your pedal board that aren't there for shred. They're there for just some regular kind of like slow meandering like walking music into. Hmm, what would the amp be? I need something with contrast here. I'm reading about running, man. I was letting you, <laughs> I was letting you just talk. I've, ru- I've run out of my metaphor. So you guys fill in the rest in the comment section, wherever you happen to be. So this is actually the second definition of running on dictionary.com is managing or directing. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, like I running a like, show. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, oh, I'm. But also running is, like you said earlier, like uh, as a verb. 
um, you have like an amount or sorry, as also as a noun, the amount, quality or type of liquid flow. So I think that's kind of like, so you're like if you're like, running the sink, if you're, if you're running cable or you're running you're the running hose water or you're running and hose. people say that electricity moves like water. So it makes sense, guys. I have no problem with it. Running makes sense. Let's call it running forever. Uh, if you want to call it walking, that's up to you. I think sprinting works sometimes. Um, maybe strolling. And then I stroll, you know, my signal through a wah pedal. And then I sprint it through a delay pedal. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Is there I, something there? I tried to just look up run. And it's like the, so many definitions of run. There's also to be an operation. I mean, in my case and, and your case as well, um, many times the sounds we were making can remind you of the runs. So, I mean, it works on Yikes. multiple levels, right? That yeah. is a diarrhea joke. I'm comparing the music we're, we make to excrement. We're doing this again? To loose excrement. We did this like two weeks ago. I do it every chance I get, Steve. All right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think like if I wasn't going to say like, oh, I'm running this. What? Because people say like, oh, what? Even when people ask, they'll be like, oh, what do you run? What pedal? What's your signal chain? What pedals are you running? Right. Like, and that would be, I guess, also like, what pedals are you managing? What pedals are you? Right. You, are you um, uh, operating? From now on, you have to, sp everyone has to speak with exacting specificity. That's, I you feel like that would be weird if you say like, which, well, which pedals are included on your pedal storing and transportation device, and which ones are you engaging often and commonly? Mm. Which, which pedal effect boxes have become a part of your normal sound, of your consistent sound? I don't know. There's got to be some sort of entertaining way to say that, but I haven't found. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... Uh... I guess I'm, I'm still trying to think like I'm operating 11s like operating if you're, not, if you're not running like, well, I don't want to like, I don't want to muscle in on the well-earned territory, the well-earned clout of, of a surgeon, of a certified forklift, forklift operator. Oh, I don't want to consider myself an operator when there's heroes out there. Heroes in our world who are certified forklift no, operators. You, you, so you don't want to inc infringe. I'm not a pedal board operator when there's forklift operators for, in this world. Forklifters lives matter. Yes. Guys. Uh, forklift operators. How dare lives matter. a surgeon call themselves an operator in an yeah. operating room when this world happens to have actual angels sent to us by God that we call certified forklifts? Operators, so you feel fine. You so you so you you don't want things to be operating because of the forklift operators. No, out of respect, but, but you have no problem infringing on the territory of athletes who do a thing every day. We're talking about runners here. Who They're sacrifice running their body to to do a thing that you could never possibly do unless a bear was trying to eat you. We need new words for what we do. We need new words for. Guitar signal paths. What am I Let's doing? Let's just call it strumming. Hey, what's she strumming? How is this micro? But the thing is, is like running is so like, I'm running a, uh, uh, what, what, who's that? We'll the, just say utilizing. What are you, you what are you utilizing what's as the part make, of your guitar the, equipment? What's the make of these microphones? They're Lewitts. Lewitts. You run in a Lewitts into a road, a roadcaster. You're operating a Lewitt, a Lewitt. You're strumming a Lewitt. You're stringing a Lewitt. What strings are you stringing into your pedal string? I mean, these are ropes. What's your how, what? <laughs> what's your ropes course like? <laughs> it's very high. <laughs> Don't slip. <laughs> Isn't there a like a sailing term for your collection of ropes? Your is it is it rigging? Your rigging. How's your rigging? Because you got rig there. That works. How's your rigging? But see, ropes, like you, ropes, I feel like what's it's your, a thing that you. What's your rigging? I feel like ropes is a thing that you would also run. Yeah, you would run ropes. Like you'd have a you run. You can run ropes, you can jump ropes. You can tug ropes. You can tug, well, you can only tug one rope. You can tug a rope in a tug of war. You can tug a rope. I have faith in our audience that there's a few of them that could tug more than one rope. 
Have you ever seen <laughs> have you ever seen kids do that thing where they're doing tug of war and they always want to like they always want to like spiral the, right, the rope right. around they their arm. wrap it. And I've never seen it happen, but I've always heard that that was like a surefire way to get your elbow dislocated. Yeah, bad things could happen doing that. Don't commit yourself permanently to something that's being tugged. And I'd always see like some kid do it who was like, they were like the athletic kid. And so they're like, I'm going to be, I'm the strongest one here. I'm going to do this. And lined up on the other side of them was a kid who doesn't look, doesn't look athletic but also what played like freaking offensive line for the local high school. And, and also has something to prove. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they don't care how many muscles they pull. They're going to pull, you know, whoever they can no, no, into like the not, mud. I'm not saying not even that. I'm saying like they just, they don't look athletic, but they know how right. to like utilize their size right, right. properly. And it's like, it doesn't matter how strong you are. You're not going to move them. Right. I don't know where I was going with this. Don't wrap it around your arms, guys. Yeah. And don't wrap it around your neck. I'm in a dark mood. But if you do <laughs> want to wrap your mind around something, you can wrap it around <laughs> heading over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast, where for as little as $1 a month, you can support this show, 60 cycle hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, bricking, reviewing, reviewing playing, playing, smashing, recording podcasts, podcasts. That's right. That's right. The Guitar Podcast podcast. For $1, you support the show. and We will read your name aloud on the show. And if Ryan doesn't forget, at the end of the show, he'll put up a little thing with your name You're on You're going to have to get me an updated I list. Do. I I know. Yeah. Uh, for $2, we'll do that. For $3, we'll do that. For $4, we'll do that. For $5, we'll do that. Plus, we'll send you a little bag of merch for 6 7 8 and $9. We'll do all those things at the $5 level. At the $10 $10 level, you unlock inner circle mode. Yeah, where we will add your personal Facebook account to our inner circle group. Where you can hang out and chat with us and get to know us personally and talk talk trash on anything going on on the internet. Suggest an album for our album review. Mm, Yeah, yeah. Vote for what's going to happen on the show. Help us make decisions. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of privileges that come with the inner circle, guys. For $25, you get all of that plus bragging rights. Mm-hmm. Oh, also we do uh, blood rituals every mm-hmm. second Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It's a pot, it's a potluck. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, go join the inner circle. Go have- join our Patreon. Whatever you want to do, every little bit helps us uh, produce a show. Like there's a lot of hidden costs with doing all the stuff that we do. And it's nice to have some money stored away so that it doesn't come out of our tiny little pockets. Yeah. Otherwise, this show might be running us dry. Uh, Or operating us dry. (laughs) uh, Other ways to support the show, just listen, jump online, uh, leave us a review. Send us a song. Thumbs us up on YouTube. Go to iTunes, rate us, and write a review. Yeah. All right. This last ad was sent by Randy Chaplin. Ryan already brought it up here, but then I closed it. This is a mint condition. Mint. J Mask Esquire Jazz Master and Stand for $375. Yes. Well, yes, this is in mint condition. Like mint, like a piece of gum that's been chewed and sucked to a bathroom wall. Is is there any rhyme or reason to the drawing? So this thing is, is listed as mint, but it's it's covered doodle in doodles. Over. There's a drawing of the bass player from the Gorillas, the cartoon yeah. bass player. I don't recognize anyone. I feel else. like this one at the top is maybe like a SRV it type kind of, of does a look character. Like Steve Ray Vaughan, but and then next to him is a Jimi Hendrix kind of a looking character. Oh, who's that? That's uh, that's from a punk band. I forget which one on the top horn there. It just looks. Excuse me, burrito burp. Um, it just looks like a teenager scribbled all over it. But it's mint. It's in mint condition. Um, is this guy wearing a Pokemon hat? Is that Jay Mascus? Jay Mascus, I always see wearing hats. That's a he's, yin, no, he's yin wearing yin a yin yang hat. Yeah, but is that? I feel like Jay Mascus. Is that Jay Mascus? I don't know. I don't know what all these characters are. But I can say it's not in mint condition. Three seventy five is a pretty. Decent price for these, isn't it? Or normal? Um, the J Mascus Squire. Oh, J Mascus has glasses sometimes. It's not him then. He also has a big old beard and long hair. I don't think it's J Mascus. I was thinking maybe young J Mascus. But... No, I don't think so. 
Was um, Jay Maskus ever young? Oh, here's a picture of him. He's always been an old man. Uh, yeah, he was young. He was a baby one time. Um, 375 I feel like, is a fair price for an actual mint condition one. Maybe they go for more. I don't think they go for less. But the Jay Maskus uh, Jazz Master from Squire is an excellent guitar. Yeah. A really solid guitar, a good-looking guitar, for the money any day of the week. And I, th- I think I think there's a case here to make a lowball offer on this. Attempt to remove as much as you can that you don't like. Maybe you like this, but try to move as remove as much as you can with rubbing alcohol or mineral spirits. And if it doesn't completely take care of it, this is a case for a refin or a relic, something like that. I think this is a project starter. You're getting a good guitar starting is out. Is this one Eric Clapton? I feel like that's Eric Clapton. That might be Eric Clapton. I feel like that's the little Eric Clapton doodle. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> hard to know. Let us know in the comment section what you think these different characters are. It, or maybe that's... I feel like that's in the style of, of a John Lennon doodle. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Eric Clapton, John Lennon, same thing. Yeah, same person. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about this, Steve? I hate it. He hates it. Don't buy it, says Steve. I'm just looking at drawings of Eric Hoffman. Now. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. We've got nothing else to say we about this. We are going to play a song, though. Yeah, tell us about the song, Steve. Well, I'm trying to download it. This song is called Leisure Sport. No, this artist is called Leisure Sport. This was sent to us by M. Gan. He says, my friend Dan's neighbor's band mm. uh, they are called leisure sport the song is called Tennessee
I like it. That was great. He likes it. He likes it. What do you think? I liked it. I, I was it. I was waiting to see what the vocals were going to be because I thought felt like that was going to make or break whether or not you liked it. The vocals definitely made it for me. I like a I like a nice, smooth, charming female vocal, and that's what that was. Mm. And I like the rest of the song as well. Like I would listen to that for sure. All right, bye everyone. Stay grounded. See ya.